right, so next up we have a script review. It's been a fucking while, Jay. It's been a while since we've done a Let's script review. Let's get naked. Fucking but rolling jello. I want to. Shit. Thanks to Bloody Disgusting uh, and Jeffrey Reddick, one of the original creators of Final Destination. We, we covered the story last week where he was talking about how he originally had a completely different script for the Final Destination that we saw on screen, where the characters actually like were driven to kill themselves rather than this crazy fate monster hanging over them and killing them. Now, they released this week the actual a treatment that he had and a script, and we're gonna review and recap the actual script that he had for the original Final Destination before Final Destination. Let's go down the rabbit hole and get fucked. Oh, it's gonna get nasty, hey, Jim. Man, I'm gonna tell you right away, this script was fucking awesome. It was like, good. It was badass good. And you know what? I love Final Destination. I love what we got. Like, it was great. It was amazing. Uh, the script is, is solid uh, in the movie that we got uh, in the final product. But this, I was telling Mike earlier, like, if they made this uh, something that, you know, they were gonna remake, which I don't want them to remake Final Destination, but if they were gonna remake it, using this script as as a, as a basis would be fucking incredible the, the main thing like the one i just it's dark as fuck dude oh my god it's so much darker than the original script that we got or the original movie that we got like this is like when you find the whistle in super mario 3 and you have to go to world 8 <laughs> and you have one life and you're like that's a holy fucking shit package and i'm not ready i don't have a game genie yet, and I, I like it's like when you first find the whistle and you go into the dark like Doom, 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 doom. And it's fucking scary, and like, like there's shit on fire. And you're like, what the fuck is happening? The pop tart uh, concrete that would like drop on you. Oh, dude, every it is it, it like, oh my god, and it reminded me overall, it, like it, it like it, it feels like it borrows shit from, and I said this uh, it, when, when we were mentioning it last week, uh, it, it borrows from Jacob's Ladder. Uh, sometimes they come back, and uh, a little bit of Nightmare on Elm Street. Like as far as the nightmare scenarios, I definitely see the nightmare. The, yeah, the nightmare yeah. scenarios that happen, and and also one of the main differences that you see in this is that death itself literally has a, a like a personality. It has it has presence other than just a floating black cloud like a like a fart cloud. It's actually a presence that talks. Yeah, and it interacts. So and, and here's the whole idea. Like the whole idea before, and we covered it last week, was that he Jeffrey Reddick wrote a a, a script treatment for this, and a, a, well, an actual script for it. And and the original script, instead of having fate come around and like kill these characters in crazy ways, like we saw in Final Destination, the way he would do it was they would feel such guilt for having these people die on Flight 180 that they, they would end up killing themselves. So you had teens killing themselves yeah. instead of instead of having, you know, the Grim Reaper in some f sort of cloud form killing them uh, with whatever was around, they would kill themselves. And it, it ultimately ended up being too dark and whatever for the theaters or for, or for the studios. But the one thing I want to say about this, when I heard that, I thought, I thought the, the alternate to what we got, which was like a popcorn, the Final Destination, mm. a popcorn, crazy kills, horror movie, which fun. we love, I thought his original script was more in lines of like a hereditary, like something dark. Yeah. Like in one, in one instance in the script, a girl, um, a, a sister dies. Like her sister dies on the plane crash, and she's so overcome with guilt that she's like she's dressing up as the sister. She's pretending to be the sister, and eventually in the script, she like covers herself in gasoline and perfume or whatever she can find, and she lights herself on fire. Isotoners. In my mind, when I heard that at first, I was thinking that the original script was far more like hereditary and like dark dark you know mm -hmm. horror like it like it was uh but it's not it still reads like a final destination film it, it still has that popcorn flavor to it in a way i didn't expect it to yeah. but you're talking about teens killing themselves you're talking yeah. about all these dark things and it still comes it still translates to the same final destination that you got in the theaters but it's just way darker oh yeah i would i would imagine like it like to me it felt like on a level of horror like as far as like when they have these flashbacks these teens uh uh, of, of them, uh, their former classmates coming and trying to drag them into the ground and make them uh, die with them. Like, you should be here. This is where you belong. And, like, there's one specific scene. Uh, you were talking about the girl that sets her on, herself on fire. I'm thinking about Tony and I think it's Heather. 
is his girlfriend in it, uh, when she appears to him at the subway station and she's vomiting out her insides, walking towards him as she's cr uh, crying crimson Into tears. Into his fucking mouth. Yeah, and then it she, tastes like shellfish. Oh, God. Did you have daiquiris by any chance? <laughs> I'm just wondering. But yeah, it, like she's vomiting and like slowly becoming more of a husk as she vomits and walks towards him. And she's like, how much do you love me? How much do you love me? I was like, not enough to lie, bitch. I'm leaving our social circle. You also find that uh, the, the, the people of the town... Uh, you know, they're all survivors and hang out together now, which is pretty much in line with what we got, but it, they, they think they're part of some kind of suicide cult. Like, they're all, like, so guilty about what they did that they're, like, they're forming some kind of, like, cult. It's fucking really, it's, it's, it's an amazing read. It actually reads really easy. It's a breezy kind of, uh, beautiful cover girl kind of, uh, read. Um, and it's shocking how violent it gets and, and how dark it gets. And yeah. I'm like, fuck, dude. Like, like toward the end, like even uh, with the little heartbeat from the baby, yeah, I'm like, fuck, I, you know, but like, I mean, I was, I, I don't know. I think the only way it could have been better is if you got fucking the Grim Reaper from Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey, because you may be a king or a little street sweeper, <laughs> but sooner or later you dance with the Reaper. <laughs> At one point, he has a premonition. They go, they're all feeling guilty, and they decide to go together to the crash site of the the, the plane going down. Yeah. And uh, Devin Sawa's character in the in, in the script has a premonition where the plane goes down and, and they're all out there and they're all like trying to feel something and they're tr they're going through their grieving motions but all of a sudden like their ashes from the, the plane they come up and they grab them by the legs and they start pulling them down it's fucking and crazy. it's like this guilt thing that they go through I, so I, like they, I, but I related to Alex like a motherfucker in this it's like yeah. why do I feel guilty like fuck y'all Ming rank better me than them <laughs> I felt like that the entire time reading it and I mean I'll obviously I identified with Alex in the original Final Destination because I mean he's trying to warn everybody and they're all thinking he's like fucking nutball sandwiches yeah. but I, at the same time I really relate to him because he's like why the fuck are you all so guilty for like why are you all making it seem like like we shouldn't have survived but what you find out is that that, that de like the death angel itself is like available like he's there he's in the fucking movie or in the script he's he's actually a, a being that has uh, uh, substance he actually shows up and he actually talks to him that I think is one of the coolest things about it he's like you know there's one scene where Alex is like why are you doing this and and, and and death is like to make things right and it always has this dark menacing voice and I just dude I don't know man I, I feel like I love Final Destination I really do I love the, the original movie but this one would have been so fucking like it you know what it feels like? It feels like if Blumhouse took it seriously to remake it and use this script. Well, it's like, okay, so so in the original, like in the movie, uh, fate just like, it, fate's not there, but it, it, it takes control of these kids and it makes them kill, it makes them die in a way or another. But in this, fate's an actual like black smoke cloud from Lost, but it right. has a face. And they eventually find in this, uh, when they look up the history of the stuff that's going on, they, they see the, the face in the books and whatever. And Death will actually talk to the characters. Like at one point, mm -hmm. before it throws a guy in front of a train, in this horrible scene where his his dead girlfriend is like showing up to him. He's drunk and, and he gets done partying with his friends. I was like, bitch, you got herpes? <laughs> Why are you bothering? His dead girlfriend, who died on the flight, shows up and she starts puking no, she didn't die on the up flight. her. Uh, well, she starts puking. Survivor, up, yeah. Yeah, she starts puking up her insides. Like she's throwing up her insides into his mouth and you imagine what that would look like on screen Ooh. into his mouth and then right before he's like tripping and about to fall in front of a train because of what he's seeing that's not actually there Alex Devin Sawa's character shows up and it looks like he pushed him into the train mm. but death stops time like <laughs> Professor <laughs> Xavier god damn and he looks at Alex and he was like you know stop stop interfering stop doing this so like, woo wee that boy's got skill and there's one scene where there's one dude who's a, a, a he, he's a huge Christian like he's all into the Christian he's like everything's gonna be fine whatever and like that where the cross starts to burn into the wall mm. and the TV comes on and they start start to hear there's a lot of guilt stuff going on like right before they die they hear the passengers of flight 180 like crying and like burning alive and, and dying and children laughing yeah and it's really fucked up and, and and like there's a scene where a dude kills himself with the garage he hangs himself and he calls his dad right as the his it's fucked up because his dad's coming home from work and he calls his, his dad hits the garage button and the garage starts to open and the kid calls his dad and he's like, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And the dad has no, it's very screamish because the dad has no idea that his son has tied a noose to the garage door. So when his dad gets home from work, he's hanging himself using the garage. And it's, it's very, very screamish with Drew Barrymore in the beginning when mm -hmm. like they the, their daughter dies like a few feet from him. Or, it's more so like, fucking it, it, dark. It feels like more like Rose McGowan. When she gets hung up, well, on. like literally, yeah, kill. But, but yeah. yeah, it looks like 
the thing is, it's very creative on on these skills, and but and they're but like I said, they're very twisted. They're a lot more evil, I suppose you could you should uh -huh. say, as far as what what you got in the final product of the original Final Destination, and 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 the fact the death does have, I think he could be Tony Todd because he does. When they describe him, when he finally comes to light at the end, uh, a swirling black cloud, but it, it, it's a being that's made up of black smoke, and but you can see eyes. So it is a being, <clears throat> like it's there. It reminded me of um, the way it was described. I, I, I don't, I'm probably going to fuck this up, but I'm not 100% sure. It's been a while since I've, I've uh, cashed out my geek card, but uh, the Nazgul from the Lord of the Rings, like those fucking screaming goddamn uh, Reaper monsters that were the former kings. What about the black monsters from Ghost? Were they like the dragon yeah, in the but, 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 and, Yeah, that, that would be uh, like, That was horrible. It's amazing, Julie. You take the love with you. That shit scared uh, but, me. Um, well, no, well, because the Nazgul, like, I think it's Nazgul, they have like the cloaks, they look like traditional like Grim Reapers. I don't think they would have gone that far, but they're made up, like, I, I think there might be, be a cloak or something. If there's a final product to come to light, you probably would see a lot similar to like a shred, uh, like a kind of tattered robe and, and a hood and just the eyes coming out. And it's funny because what this thing does, it's it's called the angel of death, or they also say it's referred to in many cultures and religions as different things when they're looking up and researching it, which is pretty much what they did in the original movie. They're researching and, they, and they're trying to figure out the pattern, uh, but they're like, it's the it's the it's death. Um, it was also called the the sisters of fate in the Greek mythology and all these other things. Um, it's really interesting. It's 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 actually well done, and the fact is that. This this thing, a lot of people maybe uh, in the Christian faith or uh, in Judaism, I'm not 100 percent. They would think that well, it's the angel of death. It, it's supposed to be comforting and take you on to the next life or whatever. No, but, but this motherfucker's straight gangster. Yeah, he's gonna slice your shit up and say I stole it. <laughs> uh, you know what he is? He's that motherfucker that held vanilla ice over the fucking like thing. He's like, shook night. He shook night. It's the shook night. It's death. the motherfucking shook night. Yeah, that's exactly what he he, <laughs> he held vanilla ice over. He's like, where's my money, bitch? Yeah. And that's what he does because he'll say. There's one part um, where one of the surviving girls is like, oh, you got to do better than that or whatever because he feeds on your guilt and that's what he's doing, your sins in a way. And she's, he's like, I can do better. Like, it, like I can just, I, I was hearing it in my head and I'm like, oh my fuck. Yeah. And dude, like, oh, if they had made this, I, I don't, like, I think that it would be, re like, it would still be revered. Like, Final Destination is always going to be revered. It would be revered in a different way, though. The same way that maybe people revere the ring, the original ring. Or, sure. Because yeah, it, it would be that. something like a very cultish kind of fucked up movie. Well, for instance, there's the one character in Final Destination who's, like, kind of gothic. And she's, like, tried to, she tried to kill herself before Nikki, yeah. or whatever. And this, the way that they kill her off is that death literally, like, she starts to open up cabinets. And, like, at one point she tried to kill herself using pills, right? right? So when death comes after these characters, these high school kids, it fucking gets deep into their psyches and it fucks with them so this particular character who had tried to kill herself using pills before she opens up a cabinet and she sees a pill bottle that has her name on it and she'll like shut the cabinet and then she'll see another one and she'll open it and it'll be like take until you die and like fucked up shit like that and then when death ultimately kills her it slices her Achilles it slices her wrists it bleeds her out dry in this most fucked up awful heinous way this movie is really well, fucking, it's not just that, like it's mean what it's I, way meaner what I was going to say was like, um, also what's interesting, and that's why I mentioned uh, sometimes they come back, is because each person that dies that survived the plane, uh, they are the ones, when they die, they would come back and taunt the, the, the remaining survivors. So you would see uh, the, spect the ghostly specters of these of your surviving friends, like Nikki sees Heather, she sees Tony, she sees uh, Monica, she sees all these people coming back, and they they're fucked all, up. Soon. They're all fucked and nasty, and they're trying to like, oh, you, hey, are you think you're better than us? You don't think you could, you belong with us? And it's yeah. and you, I, I was visualizing that, seeing these dead fucking kids, these teenagers taunting you to join them and you know very nightmare on elm street and also very mothman prophecies i know uh, like mixed uh, together but i feel like you know it, we'd be fine because i think the only fears that we have and and I'm like shut the fuck up jay no and regret i'm not dying today no no regrets no i'm not talking about us i mean like, if death was like i'm gonna feed on your fears like why well, got none really <laughs> it's like it's like except it's like hey uh in a microwave here's an ipa and I'm like, i don't have any beer nor money because i'm out of work right now <laughs> do your worst death. So I'm gonna drink it. So what did you do now? Now you fucked. But no, uh, yeah, it, 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 like they did a solid job, man. And goddamn, I'm, I'm not gonna say that I would not love to see this movie made. I would love to see this fucking script come to life in some way or fashion. And I'm also not gonna go ahead and say that I want a remake of Final Destination. But if you were gonna go on a Dude. remake, 
Here's what I'm saying though. Like, mm -hmm. uh, here's what I'm saying. Look, and this is it. Why well, you gotta lean up like Bob Saget? I'm, I'm getting fucking excited, dick. Uh, what Tracy. I'm thinking is, what I'm thinking is this though. Like, we live in a world. I, Hollywood has no good, good, no good ideas. Yeah. Remakes, reboots, all this shit like that. What about the original version that the studios weren't willing to do before? So like, Jeffrey Riddick wrote this script, mm. and it's fucked up, and it's dark, and it's weird, and it's out there. And Death literally speaks. Like, Death is a cloud who speaks. At one point, at the end of the movie, they're out in the middle of a field. Because it draws... Dude, uh, your fucking pitch would be terrible. It's like, it's a cloud that speaks and no, it's full no. of death. But I'm, I'm talking about the script. I know, I know, I know, but you're like, it's a cloud that speaks. So that's how that, that's how the script ends. Like, they end up in the field where the, the plane initially came down. And you've got the main girl who's looking up at the plane flying down at her. And, like, she's... That like, was an death awesome is forcing scene. That was her, an awesome scene. Yeah, death is forcing her to watch the plane fly out of the sky towards her and down her. And in this script, it doesn't blow up in mid-sky. The plane, like, stalls out and then di nose dives. So they put her out in this field and she's watching the plane come down and all these people are burning to death and like the, the victims are like reaching out yeah, to like them. Yeah, like zombies or it's something. It's fucked yeah. up. It's so dark, it's fucked up. And like uh, Death, at the end of this, she realizes that none of this is real or whatever and Death literally comes out and it's like, it can't kill Devin Sawa's character because he had that premonition so technically he wasn't supposed wasn't to die. Time. Yeah. So death realizes it can't kill him but it can hurt him. So it's like breaking his oh, dude, legs, it's fucking... <laughs> breaking his arms. Yeah. And she's supposed to die, but right before death kills her and, it, and we mentioned this last week when we talked about it, but right before death kills her it's like, "Oh, fuck. I can't do it because you got a baby inside of you because no, they fucked last week." Yeah. So the the end of the well, movie, the way they're describing it though, because when it swirls around her, because the girl's gonna shoot herself in the head to protect Devin Sawall's character or uh, Alex, you hear her heart going kathump kathump, and you know they're they're making sure to emphasize that you can, the audience would hear the heart beating faster and faster as she's putting the gun to her head and the the black cloud of death is surrounding her, but then it's like you know you hear slowly another heartbeat go. Like a smile. Yeah, and then it gets fucking pissed. It's like, God yeah. damn it! I, I was going for my platinum record because you got a baby inside of you. Fuck. So then it all seems happy, and then she's having the baby, and Alex is there. The baby comes out. They're like, the baby's healthy, everything's great. But as we talked about last week, the lights start to shudder. Death shows up at the door, and Death kind of jumps at the camera, and the thing ends because she, once she passed that life through her, and like she had the baby, now she's still supposed to be dead. So Death takes her, but. What I'm saying is, is that if you done if you did this movie to like if you've done it in that way, yeah. it would have been so fucking dark and it was been so fucking out there. I don't know how it would have been perceived, but I don't know, man. Part of me thinks that would have been it, like the Final Destination franchise. If you put a gun in my head, I think it would be better off had they gone with this original script. Mm. And I hate to say that because Final Destination was such a well-known you know, franchise. I, you know, I, I I I could agree. I could go there. I could join you in the sun, but I would choose to stay on the land <laughs> and not go deep into the rivers. It was so but, dark. But I, I want to go into the rivers. I want to taste it first. It would have scared people a little bit more. I want to taste the river. And if water. you scare people a little bit more, then your franchise does a little bit better. Well, I think the franchise would have been better off had they done it. Here's the thing: if they had done that script, there's a lot like. Like, and I'm not saying like you shouldn't be cautious about certain subject materials. Honestly, well, we know that. But if they had done this movie, you got um, September 11th, right? That was a big one. And that already happened with Final Destination anyway. But then the suicides and kids with mass school shootings and things like that, that might go back and look like coarse on that yeah. movie, you know, in a way. It'd be a little bit more like uh, crass in their um, critique of it. And it might ruin the franchise in that way. But I'm not also would say you could have the balls. And just be like, look, it's a fucking fantasy movie. It's a fiction yeah. movie. It's a horror movie. It's not meant to be, you know, a representation of anything that's going on in our current society or current affairs. It's just a fucking fun time. And it's dark and it's 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 disturbing, but it's meant to be. I don't know. Maybe enjoy some time with your kids. I don't fucking know. But I, do I want to? I want to tip my you toe. Fuck with fate. I want to tip my toe. No fucking hoe. You want to fuck with. Fate. I'm about ready to call fucking JG Wentworth. <laughs> uh, no, I I would have dipped my toe. You know what? Fuck it. I'll go all the way in. Yes. If you put a gun to my head right now and said, "What would you rather have? The the, the one you got for Final Destination, the the movie, or this being made yeah. with Devin Sawa in the cast?" I'd go with this. Here's my only question though. 
The only the only question I have for it is 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 death is actually a character. It speaks. I like that. It talks. I like it. I like the idea of it. But if you fuck that up, no, no. If you have like, because because generally at one point they're in the field and they're fighting death, and Randall's mm -hmm. there, and Alex is there, and she's there, and they're fighting death, and death, like you see this giant black cloud come right. over the hill, and it's fucking funneling towards you and it like cuts back to them trying to drive away and escape and it's like a little it's like an action sequence it's like a fucking national treasure action, okay. action sequence where death like flips their car over and death's like i can't kill you but i'll break your arms like if you make I, death too much of a character you are really risking is how it, you have to do that because it could be really corny I'm like, like well, if yeah. they did that if they made death corny it would ruin the whole fucking movie nobody wants death corny they want it cream and smoothie yeah you gotta but no, I, like, you <laughs> no i was gonna say dark like, skid marks I, I said oh god train tracks in the undies but I, like um i said that last week um i thought it was initially a stupid idea to have death as a character you know stalking you know as an actual being stalking them like michael myers or jason Voorhees, because it takes away the the suspense and 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 the fact that it was a different kind of movie rather than just a another uh serial killer thriller kind of movie yeah but if they if they did it smart and they did it in a way where it's still smoky a monster kind of like and it talks a little bit like from the shadows it's a lot of dialogue it does but not not as much not to a point where it's like annoying like i feel like it's got uh, i see like a stingray being like you want to fuck with me <laughs> What yeah. the fuck with me? Or like one of those fucking fish that clean the fucking ass. <laughs> yeah. But no, uh, I uh, I feel like if you keep it within reason, and I feel like obviously if the script was treated and it was actually going to be made, they would, they would take chunks out of it, would make yeah. it more palatable for a lot of horror fans. I think the issue is if you make it, like you said, too much of a character, if you make it Michael Myers, if you make it Jason Voorhees, if you make it Nightmare or Freddy Krueger, yeah. then you're fucked. You're, it's all how he looks. <clears throat> but I would, what I would do, yeah, exactly. I like I would, I would do the Nazgul thing. I, I'm probably saying that wrong and fuck me in the ass. I'm sorry. But the the, the monster things, the, the the Reaper looking things in Lord of the Rings, if you did it like that. Or something similar to that, where they only appear a little bit out of the shadows, or maybe even do something like lights out, the way like the shadows would come out, like after you turn the lights off, yeah. just where it's like just a mask, but then it kind of forms a body a yeah. little bit, and you just see eyes coming out, and then you have Tony Todd's voice doing uh, maybe a little bit more limited dialogue. I think it'd be fucking killer. Yeah. And, and you know, I didn't, I didn't even mind the part where it, when it broke uh, Alex's arms and shit and doing that, because what it said was like, yeah, I'm not like I can't kill you, I, but I can fucking make you suffer. Yeah. Like I mean. And like I got, I, like I felt like in some way though I did feel like ghost ship. He's like, uh, I gotta fill a quota, okay? If I don't fill a quota, management won't be happy, and that's not a good thing. Yeah. He's like, you got away, and management won't be happy, so yeah. don't get in my way, and nobody gets fucking over. But either way, yeah, dude, I gotta be honest. If if you put a gun to my head, like I said. I would take this movie like made. And that's that's sacrilege, man. Like a lot of people are gonna come after our fucking nut sacks with goddamn tasers, yeah. but. Take this movie, make it with the cast that we had in Final Destination. I think you got a fucking bigger hit than what you got. And I'm not, and I'm not saying, I'm not saying that the Final Destination, the original movie, is not fucking awesome. It's yeah. amazing. I'm just saying, if you guys get a chance, read this script on your own yeah. and see what you think. If you do, I, I agree with you. If you do death right, yeah. like, and and there's no way to possibly tell it. Like, it has to look good. The CGI has to be there. Like it has to look perfect. It has to be done fucking well. If death is scary, if you make that fucking black cloud scary, mm -hmm. that movie could be fucking. OJ it could not Simpson. only be like OJ Simpson. <laughs> yeah, it could not only be like a cultural phenomenon, yeah. like like Final Destination was, where it's so crazy and fun with a crazy and wild kill. It came out at the right time. But it could be also truly frightening. Yeah. Like you could take a, a, a franchise that's here and put it up to here. Yeah. But it's only if it's done right. So comment down below with your all's thoughts on that. If you read the script, we'll put the link down below for all that shit. It's a wild fucking script. It's crazy, but it's so cool that Bloody Disgusting went and got that and released it. I would I, I think it's a great conversation. So whatever your all's thoughts the are. The wild nights is calling. The wild uh, 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 is calling. Uh, there's a Slight hemorrhoid creeping up on Michael that he's been dealing with in the night. No, for you, Michael. I'm not putting preparation H on his asshole. It's for you, Michael. You're not wiping either. We watched a movie. Yeah. We watched a movie.